Good afternoon, people watching in 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something, excuse me, we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. You put your faith and trust in Jesus. And the moment you accept him as Savior, not only are you saved, but you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you will never lose your salvation. You're justified by the blood of Jesus and rapture ready. Once saved, always saved. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. The Holy Spirit will change you. I got several articles this morning. And of course, all of them are bad. Every last one of them. So this right here. And I had started this off. I, I mentioned this last night. So Russia moves nuclear capable bombers to within 115 miles of NATO country borders. So Putin has increased the number of his strategic nuclear bombers stationed <clears throat> at an air base near the Finnish and Norwegian borders and satellites are showing that now. So the move comes amid high tensions over whether Putin plans to launch an atta atomic attack in Europe and on his ongoing invasion of Ukraine, which has suffered a string of embarrassing setbacks in recent months. Russia has gradually increased the number of strategic bombers at Olinya Air Base from none on August 12th to now 11. So the bombers are stationed around 115 miles away from the border of NATO member Norway and about 95 miles away from the soon to become alliance member Finland. They can also be used with conventional weapons. The Armageddon planes are usually stationed at Ingalls Air Base, up 450 miles southeast of Moscow. Then this came out at the same time. And this is saying right now the Kremlin officials warn of a guaranteed escalation to catastrophic World War III. This is saying that after a NATO official from a, after a NATO official said a Russian nuclear response would lead to the intervention of Ukraine's allies, Russia has once, once again warned that meddling from the West would spark World War III. which the West can insist on doing. He has warned and warned and warned. One of these days, those warnings are going to come to pass. He warned that the world, he warned the world that global carnage would ensue if Western allies of Ukraine continue to meddle in the conflict. They said World War III would be sparked if the West continued to intervene if a nuclear war was to occur. It would be catastrophic for all of mankind. Should NATO approve, should NATO approve Ukraine's bid to join this organization, a top Kremlin official threatened global destruction. Alexander Venediktov, the Deputy Secretary of Russia's Sec uh, Security Council said, Kiev is well aware that such a step would mean a guaranteed escalation to World War III. Benediktov has insisted that the West 
are solely making threats of nuclear war. He claimed Russian officials have never voiced any threat to use nuclear weapons or mass destruction. But since everybody else is, why not? Meanwhile, in Europe, some politicians openly call for such actions. Even a number of politicians in the European Union do not conceal and do not rule out the possibility of using weapons of mass destruction against Russia. They don't. Benediktov took aim at Ukrainian President Zelensky, claiming his actions and words are dictated by other people. And they are. So he added, it would be good for the West to realize that their protege can take on so much that Washington and Brussels will have to think about how to deal with the consequences. We must remember a nuclear conflict will affect absolutely the whole world. And not only Russia and the collective West, but in general, any country on this planet. Its consequences will be catastrophic for all mankind. Russia's missile, uh, missile struck more than 40 Ukrainian cities and towns yesterday leading to heavy destruction. Drones also hit the region around Ukraine's capital, which had avoided airstrikes this week. Then we got another story. And this is about SpaceX. Well, SpaceX tells U.S. Gover uh, government it can no longer fund Starlink in Ukraine. So, SpaceX, Elon. SpaceX in a cooperation has informed the United States government that the company can no longer fund the Starlink services provided to Ukraine. Now, without Starlink, Ukrainian army will have almost no way to reliably communicate with what's left of the battlefield troops and would almost immediately collapse. There will be no communication. There will be nothing. There will be absolutely nothing. Now, the reason why this comes off, days after Ukrainian ambassador uh, Malinsk told Musk to F off. And if I'm not mistaken, so did Zelensky. Now, I'm providing you with uh, <laughs> communication, a way to uh, help you in this war, and you tell me something like that, I'll take your advice, and I'll take my equipment as well, and you'll be on your own. There. To many observers, this is a twofold matter. One, Ukraine bashed the heck out of Starlink founder Musk for daring to suggest a negotiated peace with Russia. So it is likely Musk has his, has his nose out of joint over the insults. And number two, it is likely cost almost nothing to fund the operation of Ukraine's Starlink services since all the satellites were already up and operating. So this is seen by many as a naked money grab could be to get the US government to fork over more cash under the guise of aid to Ukraine just saying either way it seems too many it seems to many that Elon wins he either gets to shut off the people who took his help for granted, or vice, or he gets money from the government. Either way, that's what it looks like. So, I am going to link all of these articles in the description box. <laughs> it's a joke, actually. It's really a joke. I wish Russia would, just, you know what? Just do what you have to do already. We have the Lord to meet. Because like I said, it's going to go down either one of three ways. Rapture, nuke, 
or both. I'm talking at the same time as they come down, we go up. So, we'll see what happens here. But I'm going to link all these in the description box. Anything else comes up, I will be back. Of course. And this is coming out too. And I'll, I got this off of... Um, Uh, war news 24 7 so this is saying and this is about turkey flare up in the balkans the uh Aegean and northern turkey erdogan accepted putin's proposal um defeat of turkey in a conflict with greece is the only solution for nato so erdogan services the interests of bricks this goes on this i'm watching this because this is coming out in little bits and pieces says the president of turkey erdogan now keep in mind turkey is also part of the uh, ezekiel 38 alliance and everything that's happening there <laughs> erdogan accepted the proposal of putin for the creation of an energy hub in eastern um Thrace, the decision to transform Turkey into the largest energy hub in the region was agreed behind the scenes between Putin and Erdogan. So the European Union, France, and other countries may have immediately rejected the Russian-Turkish proposal, but that don't matter. That don't matter. So this is coming out saying Turkey has cut off all contact with the West and serves the interests of the countries that belong to or will join the BRICS, as well as the axis of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the SCO. So the Russian-Turkish proposal for a gas hub in Thrace is neither so innocent nor so simple. Russia and Turkey went to control, want to control and supply the Balkan countries with energy. Bulgaria, Serbia, uh, Republica, Montenegro, um, and a, few, a couple others. As far as Hungary, Austria, and again, Germany. So they got three ways to achieve this. One, whether Bulgaria agrees through which the pipeline will continue to pass. Consequently, the decision will be approved by the European Union. And therefore, NATO, something unlikely. Number two, either Russia and Turkey will blackmail the European Union with a pipeline lock through uh, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, and number three, Balkan, a third Balkan war, and redefining the zones of influence together with a new flare-up in the uh, what is that? Caucasus. Number four, at the same time, East Med should be the East Mediterranean should be buried by all means, as it will be a competitor of Turk Stream Pipeline. For now, the Russian-Turkish axis is in favor of a lock on Turk Stream in the middle of winter so that the issue can be revisited later under the weight of energy pressure in many countries. So this is developing. So I'm going to keep track of this to see what's going on right now. Well, we will see what happens here. And this is interesting. I will be back later. I'm going to link all of these in the description box. And I will advise you to go to my um, Telegram page. Um, the address is right there in the description box. Uh, people are saying they can't click it on. I clicked it on several times and I go right to the page. So I don't know what to tell you, but it's right there. I will be back later.
uh, in the meantime, um, anything else comes up beforehand, I will be back. Thank you.